Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum and welcome all my dear students. I hope you are all in good health and due to the unforeseen circumstances which we are facing in our country and globally, the holidays were announced to you people. Uh, kindly take care of yourselves, your family, stay at home, keep yourselves hydrated, boost up your energy and your immunity levels by stacking up good vitamins. As a teacher of astrology, I would like you all to revise all the topics you have done, the topics you have missed and move forward. Uh, discuss with your friends and colleagues and if you have any queries, please feel free to ask us. Before these holidays in the histology classes, we were doing the muscle histology, uh, histology of the muscular tissue. Uh, we did uh, why a muscle is called tissue, and can it be called an organ, nomenclature related to muscle, what is sarcolemma, sarcoplasm, sarcoplasmic reticulum and we did in detail uh, the connective tissue coverings of the muscle, epimysium, perimysium, endomysium. Uh, we did the classification of the muscular tissue, uh, the three types based on striations, uh, the striated muscles and non-striated muscles. Under the heading of the striated muscles, we did skeletal and cardiac muscle and non-striated are the smooth muscles. And then we did uh, in detail the histological feature of skeletal muscle tissue. Uh, we discussed its, its uh, light microscopic features as well as its electron microscopic feature. We discussed why skeletal muscle is multinucleated and we traced its uh, embryological basis of it. And then we did uh, the basis of striation, what is the basis of striation, the presence of uh, thick and thin filaments, actin and myosin filaments in the muscle fiber which give, it's a, give it a, a striated appearance. And uh, we uh, discussed in detail the functional subunit of the skeletal muscles that is car sarcomere. We, uh, I hope you all remember that. Please revise it again and if you have any queries, please ask me. Uh, we did the A band, I band, Z line, H line and zone and uh, which proteins were present in which zone. Then uh, we did uh, the, the, we discussed about the T-tubule system in the skeletal muscle and how the muscle contracts and finally we did the, um, the three types of muscle, the red muscle fibers, the white muscle fibers and the intermediate muscle fibers. We also discussed the applied anatomy of the skeletal muscle tissue and we discussed under this head the Duchenne muscle atrophy which is the X-linked disease and due to the uh, due to the defects in the dystrophin gene leading to muscular weakness. And then we did about myasthenia gravis which was a defect in the acetylcholine receptors leading to poor muscular contraction, uh, patient can present as ptosis, we discussed that all. Today we are going to take up the lecture further and we are going to discuss the histology of the cardiac muscle tissue and the smooth muscle tissue. Cardiac muscle tissue. What comes to your mind when you hear the word cardiac muscle tissue? Cardiac. Uh, I am sure you are you're imagining heart in yourselves. Yes, that's true. Cardiac muscle tissue, uh, the tissues you know make up an organ and um, as we did the lineage that cells uh, group of cells make up tissue and group of tissue make up an organ. Okay? So heart is an organ, organ is made up of tissues and the tissue that make up, makes the heart is your cardiac tissue. And the cardiac tissue is composed of cells and the cells that make this tissue are the cardiac myocytes. So we are going to discuss the, in detail the histology of the cardiac tissue. The cardiac tissue is made up of cells known as cardiac myocytes. The, the shapes is they are all, they're, uh, cylindrical in shape, uh, smaller in diameter than the skeletal muscle, muscle cells and the, each muscle cell of the cardiac muscles, they uh, branch at their ends. And what is the uh, reason, uh, what is the use of this branching, we are going to discuss that as well. Uh, the diameter is about 10 to 15 microns, it is an intermediate in uh, diameter to skeletal and the smooth muscle cells. Uh, regarding the connective tissue coverings, in the skeletal muscle cells you did epimysium, perimysium and endomysium. Here you have endomysium only. Endomysium here is rich in blood vessels. The, the blood vessels and capillaries are going to supply the heart tissue with the blood and vasculature which is going to keep it alive and keep it pumping all the time and pre preventing it from getting fatigued. Apart from the endomysium, there is sub pericardial and sub endocardial uh, connective tissue as well, which is a loose areolar tissue with blood vessels and nerves in it. Uh, this is a slide showing the um, cardiac muscle tissue, the myocardium of the heart, composed of myocardial fibers, that is the cardiac myocytes, and uh, 
each uh, cardiac myocyte is cylindrical in shape, branching at its end. And talking about the nucleus, uh, each cell has a nucleus. The cardiac myocyte is a uninucleate in comparison to your skeletal muscle cells, which were multinucleated. The, there can be, some cells can have two nucleus as well in the cardiac myocytes. The nucleus is oval in shape and it is lying in the center in comparison to your skeletal muscle cells, which were the nucleus, where the nucleus was lying in the subsarcolemma, just beneath the sarcolemma. Each uh, cardiac uh, myocyte is uh, rich in mitochondria. Mitochondria here is uh, increased in number in comparison to your skeletal muscle cells. Why? Because cardiac myocytes have to pump, pump, pump. Needs energy, and uh, the cardiac myocytes are also loaded with glycogen and lipid droplets. These are going to provide energy for the uh, contraction as well. And there is a pigment, uh, red pigment myoglobin, which carries the hemoglobin and supplies the oxygen to the cells. It is also present in your cardiac myocytes. And when you see uh, the myocytes, cardiac myocyte of an old age uh, person, about 60 or 55, uh, there is a deposition of brownish pigment in their cardiac myocytes. This uh, brownish, yellow brown pigment is known as lipofusin and it represents the aging of the heart and wear and tear process that is taking place in the cardiac myocytes. Uh, you can see here the brownish pigment and the nuclei and the uh, striation cylindrical features of the cardiac myocyte branching features as well can be seen in this slide Achha. and what uh, is there any difference between the cardiac myocytes present in the atrial region of the heart and in present in the ventricular region of the heart uh, can you ponder over this absolutely there is a difference in the slide which you get from the atria and from slide from the ventricle of the heart in the ventricular region, the cardiac myocytes are more thicker. Their diameter is more than the cardiac myocytes of the atria. Why? Because ventricles have to pump out the blood. They have to push the blood out. So they need more uh, diameter. They, more, they need more thickness, they more, more uh, energy to pump. And uh, in, while in the atria of the heart, the cardiac myocytes have special uh, granules. This is a feature which distinguishes the, that this is the site of atria and not of the ventricle. In the atria, you have granules in the cardiac myocyte. These granules are called atrial natriuretic peptide, peptide hormone, or atrial natriuretic factor, or atrial natriuretic peptide. What's the use of it? This uh, hormone, this peptide uh, factor is released when there is an increase in the blood pressure. It stimulates the atria and there is a release of this factor. This factor affects your kidneys and increases uh, the, the excretion of sodium and water out of the kidneys, decreasing the blood pressure and lowering the blood pressure. So it is an important feature of the heart. It has this function as well. It regulates your blood pressure. Uh, talking about the presence of striation, yes, cardiac tissue is striated and we did the reasoning striations are due to the presence of uh, thick and thin filaments, actin and myosin filaments. They are present in the heart tissue and uh, so and the, the structure is just like that in the skeletal muscles. There is formation of sarcomeres, there is presence of A band, I band, Z line, M line, H zone, all are present in your cardiac tissue as well. Sarcoplasmic reticulum is less well developed in your cardiac tissue and in comparison to your skeletal muscle cells. The sarcolemma dips down to form the T-tubules. Sarcoplasmic reticulum is less well developed, so each T-tubule has one cistern of the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Uh, in uh, skeletal muscle, we did the sarcoplasma dipping down to form the T-tubule and in each side, on each side there was one, one cistern of sarcoplasmic reticulum on one side and the other uh, sarcoplasmic reticulum on the other side. But in the cardiac tissue, you have uh, sarcolemma dipping down to form the T tubule, but only one sarcoplasmic reticulum on one on the side. Uh, this is known as D diade. Diade is for two, while triade is was for three. One uh, T tubule with two sarcoplasmic reticulum that was T triade. One T tubule with one sarcoplasmic reticulum. This is diade. Diade is a feature of your cardiac tissue. Diade is present at the level of Z line. It helps in the contraction of the muscle and same contractility mechanism is uh, present in your cardiac tissue as was present in your skeletal muscle. Innovation of the cardiac tissue is by autonomic nerves, sympathetic and parasympathetic. Sympathetic is going to increase the contraction, parasympathetic is going to lower the contraction of the cardiac tissue. Uh, apart from the cardiac tissue, uh, from the heart, cardiac 